Welcome back, Dash Nerds. Today, I'll be refinishing this old record cabinet. The condition wasn't too bad on this one, but the finish was in pretty rough shape and needed a refresh. Most of the damage was on the top, as it often is. There was some kind of a reddish stain here. Looked like maybe something had spilled on the top and some of the finish was missing there. It looked like the top was a bit sun bleached and you could see a dark shadow here and a dark shadow on the other side with a light strip in between them. I'm assuming something probably was sitting on the top where the dark spots are that block the sun and there were lots of the usual nicks and scratches all over the rest of the piece. The first thing I did was to strip off the old finish. And I used a chemical stripper, which is something I haven't done in a long time. This is called QCS by Stripwell. And I just sprayed some on and spread it around. And I just let it sit until it looked like the finish was starting to come up. and then I scraped it off. And then I went over it with some steel wool and some more stripper to get whatever was left on the surface. Once the finish was off and the surface was dry, I could still see the effects of the sun bleaching with the dark and light spots on the top. And this stain was still there. So I was hoping I'd be able to remove all of that with some sanding. Although there was only so much sanding I could do because this is a veneer and I didn't want to sand through the veneer. And speaking of sanding through the veneer, I found a spot where the veneer had been sanded through at the factory. You can see this light spot on the edge of the top. And at this point, I hadn't touched this yet with sandpaper. So this wasn't from me. Someone at the factory, when this was being made, must have sanded a little too much on this edge. And I also found on the front some circular sanding marks. If you look very closely here, you can just barely see them. And I actually kind of like finding these factory defects because I feel like it takes a little bit of pressure off of myself to make this perfect because it was never really perfect in the first place, even when it was new. There were also a few dents in the top or impressions in the wood. Here you can see a few of them. They go across the grain and these aren't scratches, these are just impressions where the wood got pressed down. So I wanted to try and steam those back up. To do this, I first wet the surface with some water and then took a wet rag, or in this case a wet paper towel, and a hot iron and just applied some heat until those wood fibers lifted up again. And I had to do this over most of the top because there were so many of these spots. There was also a dent on the edge of the top. So it's hard to tell here, but I have the cabinet laying on its back. So this little dent is on the side edge of the top. And again, I just applied some water and this time I used a small soldering iron to heat that up and to try and get the wood fibers to swell up again 
and this worked pretty well. Here you can see a side-by-side -side of the before and after. And then I could start sanding the top. I started with 120 grit sandpaper on a random orbital sander. After the 120 grit, I wet it down again to see how the top looked. Here you can see that that stain is still a little bit visible and the dark and light spots on the top from the bleaching were still visible. So I kept going with the sanding and I went next to 150 grit with the orbital sander. and then I sanded it by hand with 180 grit. And then I wet it down again, this time with naphtha, not water, because water would have made the wood fibers raise up again, and then I'd have to sand it again. So I used naphtha instead, and it looked pretty good at this point. There was still just a little hint of that stain, depending on what angle you were looking at it from. And there was still a hint of the dark and light areas from the bleaching. But I felt that it was good enough, for me at least. I liked the way it looked. I really couldn't do any more sanding to try to get defects out or else I would have went through the veneer and bleaching the whole top may have helped but it was already pretty light overall and I really didn't want to make it much lighter and then have to stain it so I was trying to avoid stains and toners on this project so I just left it as it was next I sanded the sides and the front and these were really in pretty good shape, so I just did this by hand, just with 180 grit. That's all I did, because it really didn't need much sanding. And on the front, I had to be really careful to sand with the grain and not go over the line where the grain changes direction so that I didn't put any cross grain scratches in there. And then I was ready for the top coat. And in this case, I chose a satin clear spray lacquer. And I sprayed on probably three or four coats. And once those were dry, there were a few spots where I had used some wood filler to fill in some small defects, but the filler wasn't really the right color. So I touched it up with some gel stain to get it to blend in a little more. I also touched up this spot where that veneer sand through was. Even though it really didn't stand out very much since I had the gel stain out, I just touched it up a little bit, made it a little darker so it wasn't as visible. <laughs> 
Once the gel stain dried, then I put a few more coats over the whole thing to seal in the gel stain. Once that was all completely dry, then I buffed out the finish a bit with some fine steel wool. This is 4-0 steel wool and some wax. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>